Monoclonal antibodies are one of the tools against COVID-19. So what are they? Who should get them? What's the best time to get them? Where to get them from? And which ones are effective against Omicron? All explained here. Welcome, I'm Dr. Zoris Khan. You may remember this news from October 2020 when the president got infected with COVID and received experimental antibodies, which were actually Regeneron. And then in November 2020, the FDA approved three monoclonal antibodies under emergency use authorization, that is Regeneron, Eli Lilly, and GSK. So what are monoclonal antibodies? Monoclonal antibodies have been in use since the 1980s. They're used for conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, um, infections like RSV, cancers. We have currently over 100 licensed monoclonal antibodies. Mono means single, and monoclonal antibodies are obtained from a single clone of immune cells or B cells. They attach the COVID virus, preventing it from entering the cells and help clear out the virus faster. So where do they come from? They're obtained from the serum of people who have recovered from a COVID infection and have a lot of antibodies in their plasma. As the virus has a lot of antigens on it, like spike protein, M protein, so there are going to be a lot of antibodies as well. Now, each clone of antibody targeting a specific antigen. These are called polyclonal antibodies. So the plasma has a lot of antibodies and the researchers have a tough job because they're looking for specific antibodies that bind to the COVID protein in a way that shuts it down. These are called the neutralizing antibodies. Now how to mass produce? We use recombinant technology. So we take the B cells from the human sera and we get the desired RNA encoding the antibody through PCR, insert this into the plasmid, which is a DNA loop, and then inject it into bacteria. The bacteria replicate, multiply, and mass produce antibodies. Now, the traditional method would be to use uh, mice, inject them with a the COVID antigen, and then isolate the B cells from its spleen after a few days. We then screen uh, these B cells um, for the desired antibodies. Now we need these um, cells to mass produce. So we have to fuse them with myeloma cells, which are immortal cells. And then these are called hybridomas. So these hybridomas can produce lots of antibodies. Now, once we have the antibodies, we have to test them for their dose, for their safety, efficacy first on smaller populations, then larger populations, then this data is submitted to the FDA. This systematic process is called a clinical trial. So when the COVID pandemic started, the scientists immediately started isolating um, these B cells and antibodies from the sera of patients. And the first report came from Ver Biotech um, in March 2020 in California and then China and so on and so forth. Currently, we have four FDA approved monoclonal antibodies, soon to be five, Regeneron, Eli Lilly, GSK, AstraZeneca's Evoshield, and um, BriBio is pending FDA approval. Regeneron is a combination of Casirivimab and Imdivimab. Eli Lilly is a combination of Bemlanivimab and Atisivimab. GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, and Verbiotech has Sotrivimab. AstraZeneca's long-acting monoclonal antibody, Evoshield, is a combination of Tixigavimab and Sigilvimab. Now, this got approved December 8, 2021 for pre-exposure prophylaxis, so you don't need a positive COVID test or positive um, exposure history for this. And it is long acting, it has immunity for six to 12 months, it is great for immunocompromised individuals or who cannot get vaccinated for medical reasons. Bri Bioscience um, has a combination of amubarvimab and remlisivimab. This is pending FDA approval. This is phase two clinical trial data for Regeneron. The study was conducted on 275 individuals and showed reduced viral load. Phase 3 was on 3,432 individuals and revealed 70% reduction in hospitalization or death. Now, Eli Lilly uh, Phase 2 included 475 participants with hospital admissions 1.6% for antibody group versus 6.3% for placebo. Phase 3 was on 1,035 participants with reduced hospitalization or death 2% antibody to 7% in placebo. It was really after the results of this trial, uh, phase three of Eli Lilly, that we saw an increase in the trend uh, for monoclonals. This is July, 2021. 
Now, phase three common ICE trial for citrovimab showed 85% relative risk reduction in hospitalizations or death. AstraZeneca monoclonal antibody trial had over 5,000 individuals with um, a 77% risk reduction in hospitalization or death. Brie biomonoclonal antibody trial was in 837 non-hospitalized COVID patients and showed 78% risk reduction of hospitalization or death. Now, all these trials um, were, I should say, in the pre-Omicron era. So the big question is, are they effective against Omicron? Omicron is the latest variant originating from South Africa in November and has spread to 98 nations in less than a month. As of mid-December 2021, it is the predominant variant in the U.S. While current antibodies are effective against variants like Delta, not all of them are effective against Omicron. But the good news is that we do have exceptions. This is a preprint study, and I will post the link in the video description box. Now, there are a lot of details, but I'll just review these graphs with you. These are neutralization curves. The black is WA1 variant, and the blue uh, is Omicron. The blue line dipping shows effectiveness of monoclonals against Omicron. You can see that with Tixagavimab, this is Silgavimab, this is Evashield combo of both, and this is Sotrivimab. These are the only ones showing efficacy against Omicron. What you're seeing here is preliminary data from NIH.gov. This is not peer-reviewed, but gives you a fairly good idea. The colored dots are the COVID-19 variants. Yellow is Omicron, purple is Delta, green is Alpha. Efficacy of antibodies against the variants is high when on the left and reduces as we go right. So Trivimab's efficacy against Omicron is high, followed by Remlisivimab. Remlisivimab is one of the monoclonal antibodies of the Brio Bio cocktail. And as for Regeneron, it's all the way to the right. December 12th, Brio announced that its monoclonal antibodies are effective against Omicron. December 16th, the FDA announced based on in vitro studies that AstraZeneca's Evashield is also effective against all the variants, including Omicron. And now, when these clinical trials were done, Omicron was not in circulation. So we do have, however, preprint uh, studies, uh, independent studies from Oxford University and Washington University showing that the neutralizing antibody levels are within therapeutic range. Currently, with Omicron wiping out other variants, so Trivimab and Evashield are your best bet. And then Brie Bio will be FDA approved soon, hopefully. So three for now and more to come. So who can get these antibodies? If you have a positive COVID test along with mild to moderate symptoms and then risk factors. Mild to moderate symptoms of less than 10 days duration. And why is that the case? I'll come to that in a bit. Now, another scenario could be you're unvaccinated and have a positive exposure and have the risk factors. You would be eligible then as well. So what are the risk factors? Obesity, BMI above 25. If you are immunocompromised, you have diabetes, chronic kidney disease, chronic lung disease, um, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, sickle cell, neurodevelopmental disorder. Um, you have medical technology uh, dependence like a tracheostomy, um, a G-tube. If you belong to certain ethnicities. Pregnancy, and these are safe for pregnancy. Now, which age group, 12 years and up for all, except for Eli Lilly, which got FDA approved for all ages, including newborns on December 3rd, 2021, but its efficacy um, against Omicron is poor. These are single dose IV infusions given over 30 minutes, and then you're monitored for an hour for any allergic reactions. Now, timing is very important, and I will show you a graph of a typical clinical course. When you contract the virus, there is a time when you don't have symptoms. Now, if you follow the solid red line, you see the pattern. This is the time when the symptoms are not as severe and you should get the monoclonals because after that, the virus is already replicating and has elicited an immune response. So the sooner you get it, the better. And that's why the cutoff time period is less than 10 days. Key takeaway is that you need to get tested early, especially um, if you have the risk factors I mentioned, because you may miss this window. Now, how to locate a monoclonal antibody infusion center near you? So your physician should be able to help you, but you should be aware of the resources as well. So you can grab your phones or a computer and type in this URL, covid.infusioncenter.org. 
You can choose the antibodies on the left and then type in your city or zip code. Uh, you will see the centers as you scroll down um, your physician's office or you will have to call these centers to confirm availability. Yes, so you can get vaccinated after receiving monoclonal antibody, but you have to wait for 90 days per CDC recommendations. Now, this may change uh, with the upcoming studies. As I mentioned at the beginning, monoclonal antibodies are just one of the tools against COVID. We have proven strategies that is masks and vaccines and medications with the latest exciting FDA approved drug Paxlovid. It's an upcoming video. Thank you for watching.